it has been exactly one year and a day since Glenn Ford walked away from death row and through the gates of Angola prison, a free man for the first time in more than 30 years. Ford had been sentenced to die for killing a Shreveport jewelry store owner during a robbery in 1983. Prosecutors now concede they were wrong. Ford had nothing to do with the robbery or the killing. In fact, Caddo Parish prosecutors were the ones who filed the motion for Ford's immediate release. Ford said Angola Warden Burl Kane offered him a brief apology on his way out. He said that uh, it was a, a little mistake that was made, but uh, hands of uh, justice works. Sometimes it just turns slow and he's sorry about that. Along with $20 that the prison gives to all inmates on their way out, those words were the only thing Glenn Ford has received for a mistake that cost him most of his adult life. At age 65, regaining his footing has been difficult. Because soon I think I am uh, about to get some of my life back. That's another little part that's gone or missing or slipping or whatever that I will never get back. Louisiana does have a compensation program for wrongfully convicted defendants. It's modest compared to other states, $25,000 a year for up to 10 years, plus up to $80,000 more for missed opportunity. In December, Ford's attorney filed a claim for the full amount, $330,000. And the response from the attorney general's office, the office that approves or opposes claims, was crushing. I don't know if there could be a clearer case where somebody is deserving of compensation. I mean, the man walked out of prison with nothing but the clothes on his back. Attorney Kristen Wenstrom of Innocence Project New Orleans has been handling Ford's claim. In her response to the state's denial, her reply went beyond legal terms, using words like shocking, absurd, and grave injustice. But the state is fighting him on it, and it's really... It is, it's shocking, and I don't think the citizens of Louisiana want to be represented in this way by the Attorney General's office. The Attorney General's office declined to comment, but in this opposition filed by Assistant AG Colin Clark, he argues that Ford was involved in the crime because he went to a pawn shop afterward and sold items taken in the robbery. Because of that, Clark argued that Ford does not have, quote, clean hands and cannot prove his factual innocence. He admitted to pawning some jewelry that they later traced back to the victim in this homicide. Uh, they said that he is uh, banned from receiving even a dime. Attorney Gary Clements handled Ford's appeal. He said the denial is especially disheartening because Ford tried to get the evidence introduced at his original trial but was denied. Police reports show that Ford went to police about the pawn shop visit trying to help them with the case, explaining that he knew nothing about the killing. He wasn't even allowed to bring it in, and yet now, by this ironic twist, they're turning around and saying, aha, there's our reason why we can't give you any money. But back in Shreveport, Caddo Parish detectives are interested in Ford's pawn shop story. New evidence from informants that cleared Ford has implicated this man, Jake Robinson in the 1983 murder and five other killings that came after that. In fact, Robinson, now behind bars, was originally a suspect in the jewelry shop killing, but Shreveport police stopped pursuing him after they set their sights on Ford. Ford says he doesn't like to dwell on the past, but he is looking ahead to his compensation claim. And now he looks ahead with a measure of urgency. Ford was recently diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer. And despite grueling radiation treatments, the disease is spreading. And at the end of the day, I am used up. There's nothing left. It's like I just fold up. <clears throat> Not knowing how long the compensation battle might last, Ford concedes he is probably waging the fight for his children and grandchildren back in California, as well as other exonerees who may come after him. Here I am already convicted, I already did 30 years, half dead, I would imagine. 
So what much kind of fight could I actually put up against him? So you don't expect that you'll live long enough to see the end of this fight? No. No, I don't. Formerly of my jury was the uh, ex uh, KKK uh, member. Ford's quiet determination also extends my, uh, to more positive uh, things, uh, making the most of whatever time he has left. He recently spoke to a group of Loyola law students. He went to Disneyland when he visited his family in California. He took in Jazz Fest and Mardi Gras. Yesterday, he obtained a passport so he can go on a cruise next month with his kids. But everything Ford has received has been donated, some by complete strangers from across the country. He lives in a room provided by another exonerated death row inmate, John Thompson, operator of the group Resurrection After Exoneration. Nobody's looking at all that pain, what happened behind the wrongful conviction. Let's look at that picture. But Ford says he chooses to look beyond the pain, the physical pain as well as the psychological. He says he gets his strength from the support that has rallied around him. I find that amazing, actually. That is only bright part of the whole third year, the way the outpouring of people there. Yeah, I need that like I need an, uh, a heartbeat to live. Yeah. That was, uh, the, well, I take it as a blessing in the middle of all this madness. You allow the grandkids to keep track of it. Yeah. So Glenn Ford takes life one day at a time, trying to catch up with a world that has largely passed him by. He says he is determined to fight against the state for money he probably will never see, even if he does prevail in court. But he is even more determined to create new memories, happy ones, hoping that they can at least partially take the place of the nightmare he left behind. <laughs>